Welcome all viewers to Instagram live chat <laughs> on our team Zanzi. Um, today is such an honor for me. Um, we're commemorating and celebrating someone who really inspires me. We both spent time in Pretoria and we even shared the same club. <laughs> a true gentleman of Olympics and a real legend. Um, and today, exactly four years ago, he won his silver medal at Rio. Um, so we welcome no other than Cam von der Berg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd. Hello. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good. Thanks. And you? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, such a lovely surprise to chat to you again, four years after uh, the silver medal. Yeah, I'm even stressing because you're so amazing. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm sure if the Olympics went on, I would have been, uh, I would love to have been hearing from you, uh, whatever no. <laughs> the position you would have come would have been amazing, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so first, um, we'll obviously speak about the race. Um, the basic question is always, what was going through your mind um, in the courtroom? Do you listen to music? Basically, what is your like your pre-race routine? Sure. I mean, uh, it feels like <laughs> just sort of forever ago that I was you yeah. know, racing. I mean, it's only been two years. But, <laughs> but um, I mean, I, I used to, you know, I think like as, as a lot of athletes, you go through phases and, um, you know, you grow as an athlete over time. And when I was a little bit younger in my career, I used to enjoy getting like really hyped up and, you know, like quite techno, like dance music. Um, and towards the end of the, towards the end of my career, I was sort of more, a little bit more relaxed. Um, you know, I think sort of matured with age and, uh, you kind of understand a little bit better how to control your mind and, and you listen to different types of things, or maybe you don't listen to anything. So it's kind of, um, you know, like as you go and I'm sure you, you probably feel the same way, you know, you, 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 uh, you cater for the environment and what you need from the, from the day. But, um, you know, if I could even com com you know, just remember, uh, 2016, I think, yes, I was a lot more relaxed at that stage, um, sort of wasn't sure, but was thinking it's probably be gonna, probably going to be my last Olympics. So it was kind of a bit of a taking it all in experience of, you know, probably the last time I'm going to be in the courtroom for, um, for the Olympic final and, uh, you know, walking out and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, but it's, it's an amazing memory. So thank you for jogging my, uh, jogging my memory on that. <laughs> okay well that's amazing did you even like before you actually dived into the race did you expect did you expect a certain time from that race did you expect to swim like maybe 57 or something or did you did you know that you were going to go in and swim 58 if that makes sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, I, I remember 2016 it was a weird year for me uh, you know going into the games I, I knew that I wasn't in the shape that I wanted to be so I wasn't as happy but um, you know it's kind of funny reflecting now like back on you know I'm still very proud and, and it's amazing to watch it because you know I think as athletes we're so perfectionist and you always want to be the best and win and it was, it was sort of a, a strange feeling for me going in you know and I knew that Adam was so strong and I almost sort of you know, deep back in the, in my mind, I was kind of almost just trying to get that silver medal, which is really not like me. But, uh, you know, the whole year and, and, you know, I had a couple of injuries and just silly sort of things that didn't add up. And, and um, you know, I was I was really lucky in a sense, like I was celebrating the silver medal and, and I was very fortunate enough to walk away with that. So, um, you know, sometimes I think to myself, like it was like, a, you know, like a bronze or like a last place so to get a silver actually, you know. Now, as I said, reflecting back, it still it feels like such a victory, and I'm I'm probably more proud of that race today than what I was back then, to be honest. Oh, that's true. Well, how different was that race compared to like the, your London race? Yeah, London was a completely different experience. You know, I, I uh, had like no doubt in my mind that I was going to win, and you know, I was also a lot younger, as as you know, as as you mentioned, I was kind of so like hyped up, and you know, I remember I was so hyped up actually in, in the after the warm-up, I had to listen to, like, a bit of relaxing music just to calm my heart rate down because it was, like, so high. Like, you know, I was, like, I was racing already. So, um, but, you know, walking out for that one, like, there was absolutely no, my, you know, doubt in my mind that, that I was going to win. And, you know, whether or not you do win or you're not, but it's just the confidence of being able to go out and, and uh, yeah. convincing and knowing that you have the opportunity to win. Um, and that was the most amazing experience, you know, to, to pull that off and, and finish it. And, and um, you know, I think, like, 
one of my you know most most perfect races that, I, that I've pulled off would definitely be you know if I think about just the emotional um, control plus the physical came together so perfectly and and uh, culminated in, a, in a, an Olympic gold medal fortunately yeah I must say like not I'm not very experienced like you but <laughs> I must say like most of the races all the races I actually ended up doing really well it was probably those races that you like had no doubt about like your potential when you stood at the blocks it was like you weren't doubting anything and every time I try and like if I stand in the blocks I try and remember how I felt then and like try it because it's a memory that actually you remember it's like I was completely like zoned in and I knew I could do it and where sometimes if I don't then I can see it affects my race as well I don't know. <laughs> You. <laughs> no, well, I think watching you train, you know, there with, with Rocco, I can definitely say I think you you train a lot harder than me. I would have a lot of confidence <laughs> going up, <laughs> knowing that that I've got the stamina and the strength to win. So, I mean, I never forget watching you in uh, Commonwealth Games. You know, you had such an amazing competition there, and it was it was just like really awesome. You know, for me, knowing it was my last, but uh, to be able to watching, you know, watching you pull through there was really special, very cool. <laughs> That was actually stressful because your, I think it was your 50 race was right before my, I think, 100 or 200 breaths. And you came out there with a gold and I was just sitting there behind the corner. And I was like, this is going to be disappointing. <laughs> Here I am, this is my after camp. Well, <laughs> but it well, wasn't for, I was like, yes, Team SA. <laughs> for, I know exactly how you feel because, you know, for many years, Chad and myself, obviously, also, we'd always be racing sort of like, I'd be doing 100 breasts, you know, or 50 breasts, he'd be doing 200 fly or something like that. Yeah. And uh, it would always be the similar occasion where, you know, if one got a medal, it was like, oh, you know, he got a gold, I better get a gold. Or, you know, like, or he got a silver, then it was always like, you know, oh, like if when I get gold, he gets gold or vice versa, and I'm going to get a silver. So it was always a bit of a taboo and, uh, you know, something that we always chuckle and laugh. And, you know, I remember when I retired, he, he kind of said that he doesn't know who to look for now. So, so, so look, likely you can look, look to you now. You guys can, can continue that tradition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can probably say thanks because you pumped me for that race. <laughs> I was like, I can't disappoint you, Messe, right now. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so your Rio was obviously still your second fastest um, swim of your career. Um, where does that like race basically rank in your like achievements? Um. I think, uh, you know, I'd probably say re London was, was, was number one. I mean, you know, obviously, like, you'd have to say with Olympic gold, like, you know, you can't really contend too much. No, uh, <laughs> with that. But I think um, probably the 50 breaststroke from um, from Commonwealth Games was, like, an amazing experience. You know, like, you know, you obviously being there as well, just sort of, I knew that I was, uh, again, it was, like, going to be one of my last. And, um, you know, like, it kind of felt amazing in terms of, I'd come, you know, a, a different perspective in my career. You know, you know, we had such an amazing team vibe and and uh, you know, support with all the boys it was really, really, you know, unifying and and, and uh, kind of like I felt the support on the block, which was was incredible. And you know, celebrating was like celebrating with them. You know, the guys were like going crazy on the side and taking their shirts off and you know, kind of kind of like the moment where you know I felt like a WWE wrestler like getting on the, on the you know on the ropes and. <laughs> You know, some of us obviously get to celebrate uh, almost, uh, it's like, you know, people look at us strange when we celebrate and, uh, you know, that was one of those moments where, like, nobody cared. It was, like, just uh, a cool moment. So I think that's a good memory. And then my last, I guess, would be um, in, in China in, in uh, um, 20, 2018, the World Shore Course, you know, winning the double there, you know, having my mother, um, my wife, you know, just, like, sitting short on, on such a high was yeah. a good experience. As well, again, just taking it in, you know, like, last, Last time I'll ever swim at a World Champs in a final, you know, be on the podium was was quite emotional. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> I, can I remember that Commonwealth picture actually because um, it was that one where you went like this and all your muscle. Rocco posted that picture on our group saying this is how like a beast looks. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, yeah, that is definitely how someone like you. Oh, wow, that was an amazing photo. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, hopefully my little boy one day will uh, will look at his dad in those photos and think he was kind of cool at some point. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your gold medal as we speak now, or your silver medal from Rio? 
They're in South Africa at the moment. Um, oh, really? Yeah, they're with my parents. I'd, I'd actually like to, to bring them back. Um, you know, unfortunately, obviously, with Corona, we weren't able to travel. We were scheduled, I think, in March to go and see my parents. Um, so as soon as things open up again, then, then we'd like to head yeah. back. I don't know, maybe December for a little holiday down to Cape Town or something. If things are uh, things are going, support the economy a little bit there and uh, and bring back the medals will be will be cool. Yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> um, you are the first um, person to win a medal in Team SA, like in London as well. Um, the, did you feel like that added like pressure to your performance, or was it like a mot- motivation? You know, I'll never forget uh, 2012 Olympics. And after the semi-final, I was ranked first going into the final. And yeah. uh, like getting a massage, and I'm sitting on the table, and the, the team manager came in, and, you know, it's like, I've got a phone call for you. And, you know, I was like, who is it? The guy didn't want to tell me who it was. So, so I get in, and uh, it's uh, Fakile Mbalula at the time, you know, the, the minister of sports. Yes. And, and, you know, so he's like, I don't know, you know, like, obviously I have no expectation of what he's going to say. And, and obviously I'd also like, I'd, you know, I went through this whole pr- process of trying not to put too much pressure on myself. You know, as you know, it's, you know, there's so much pressure already. You don't need anything extra. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I get on the call with a guy and, and, you know, he's like, Cameron, he's like, well done. He's like, but tomorrow you have to win. Like, you have to win. And he's like, the more he's telling me. <laughs> I felt so much pressure, exactly. Like, I just try to get off the phone, like, as, as quickly as I could, because, like, that what you said, I kind of, it felt like uh, the whole nation was kind of, like, you know, bold yeah. on this thing. and like you know, you, you. <laughs> So, I must say, I, I felt a lot of extra pressure going going into uh, going into London. I think into Rio, things are a little bit more relaxed, because, you know, we had a lot of good guys. You know, I think, like, it wasn't, you know, after 2008, we had a poor performance. We only had one silver medal, so it was so important for us to do well. And then, um, you know, everyone did extremely well, of course, in, in London. So Rio, it was a little bit more, you know, we had the athletics team were, were also doing very well. So I don't think there was as much expectation. But yeah. uh, it's always nice to get, you know, get things off and started. And I felt also sometimes, you know, like Rio, it was kind of like, you know, with the time zone, obviously, it was so so difficult. And, you know, you get this medal and people are like, what? The Olympics now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, you know, you kind of, like, break the ice and, like, uh, oh, the, you know, some sports on TV again. So, uh, so it was a kind of kind of a, a unique role to play. <laughs> well, you're setting the bar very high for Team SA. Every single time we go to Rio, banging in with all these medals. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cam. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm sure you guys will do just fine. As I said, I'm... Uh, I'm so excited. I was so excited for you guys this year. I'm definitely actually fortunate enough. In a way, it's been great timing because um, with the Olympics now, well, when it would have been now, I wouldn't be been able to travel um, with uh, with Nefeli, my wife, being pregnant. So now, uh, yeah. now Olympics being next year, I uh, will definitely make it out to come and watch you swim. You see, they just knew it. They were planning it for you to come <laughs> and watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, so just some like little fun questions. Um, were you like a regular visitor at the Village McDonald's? <laughs> and like, what was your favorite order? <laughs> of course, of course. I think the, the London Olympics was, was way better because uh, we had the McDonald's in the food hall, whereas in Rio, it was like in the visitor center. So it was quite a okay. like, they kind of uh, put it out the way, you know, you really had to like be, be on a mission. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the McFlurries and the McCafe was, was quite a popular uh, order for me. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do any sightseeing there and, or experience anything in Rio? <laughs> I did. I was very lucky. We we got around a lot. One of my good friends, he um, from school actually, he lives in Rio and was oh, able wow. to take us all around. You know, we went to the most amazing like rooftop bars on like top of favelas, and obviously, you know, we went to Copacabana Beach and you know, like all the the the, the big um, tourist destinations. We sort of picked off the box and got to see a little bit of sports as well, which is nice. Uh, always nice when you when you do well at the Olympics. They kind of. <laughs> Hey guys, can I get a ticket to athletics? You know, and you're like, okay, you know, like yeah, cool. <laughs> so it comes with the perks, which is always a, a good, good incentivizer. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a really good, really vibey games, and it was really nice. <laughs> that sounds fun. 
So we all know that whatever happens on tour stays on tour. <laughs> but do you have any funny stories or um, yeah, that came out of Rio or a memory that you can remember? Out of Rio? Oh, wow. I'm, I'm an old man now, so long ago. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's a there's a lot of like good good memories. I think you know, with um, with with the team, like team bonding, and you know, getting out and doing sort of the the usual team things as we do at the end of the competition. You know, there's always a lot of like parties and and good camaraderie. But I think the the uh, the pre camp was like was quite an interesting situation for us because we you know we left home, we were away for a long time. We went to yeah. um, the USA and. You know, um, we we went down to Florida. We were in Fort Lauderdale, which was quite cool. First time that I've already been to the states, and that was like quite unique. I remember, you know, going through border control was like felt like an absolute terrorist. They were like, you know, checking <laughs> what's going on everywhere. It was pretty nuts. And then going up to uh, Cocoa Beach, we saw SpaceX, like um, the the, the uh, spaceship launch, which was like pretty yes. incredible. I mean, that's sort of quite a once in a lifetime experience. That was yeah. amazing. Um, and then, yeah, heading down to Rio, obviously, it was, it was just, you know, like, I think, you know, the whole, the whole, uh, you know, the whole, like, combination of, like, a four-month period to get to the Olympic Games is just as special as being at the Games, you know, with with your, your teammates and, you know, so many of the guys I still speak to all the time that, you know, even came all the way to Greece for my wedding just shows you that, you know, you build yeah. most of, like, special bonds with all these people and, yeah. and your friends for life. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> swimming always has, well, there could be other sports as well. I'm just talking from swimming experience. You mm -hmm. do make a lot of friends. That's all those hours of swimming and <laughs> together. <laughs> it is an individual sport, but it always ends up being a team sport because I think that's the one thing we all look forward to is making the team, getting to know each other. And that actually makes the trip, if that it's makes all. sense. It does, it does, it does. I, uh, I totally agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure the team dynamic is just as good as it used to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> good to hear. <laughs> okay, so as a newbie to the Olympic team and Olympic Village, hopefully, <laughs> for next year, uh, what advice would you give me or any other person going for the first time? I think um, get a good pair of walking shoes, for yeah. sure. <laughs> And get ready to walk because you'll walk a lot. So uh, it's some of the best advice that we were given. Yeah, is is uh, you know we were sort of like we did some of the pre camps and we put the far the pool or the hotel, especially you know sort of uh, far apart. So we would be used to walking to the pool to go train, walking back under fatigue, and that you know when you're in the Olympic Village, you're walking about ten kilometers a day easily. So if you're not yeah. used to that kind of distance, it can become actually quite tiring. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably say that, and then uh, and I would definitely say lock whatever you have very valuable to you in your drawer next to your bed because things go missing all the time. You're in a big like commune, and people think it's really funny <laughs> to uh, to to take things. Nothing like super valuable, but I mean like you know if you have snacks or you have any sort of form of uh, something along those lines. You know, guys just walk in the room and steal your water, steal your snacks. You know, like uh, do whatever. They, they miss it. They, their warm up costume goes missing. They walk in, take yours. It's a big, uh, <laughs> big community. I yeah, was <laughs> definitely, definitely be careful. <laughs> I'll take that in consideration. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm sure you've been asked this many times. Um, but is for young aspiring sports people that are watching, what advice um, can you give the youngsters um, so that they can also achieve what you have achieved? Um, you know, I think uh, what's that, what's that mean, like good stand is just always sort of, I think uh, finding the situation or finding what you want to achieve and the fun in that. And, uh, you know, as I said, like I, I changed as a swimmer so many times in my career, I almost like re recreated myself, you know, and it was like the reason I was doing it was because, you know, I would I would sort of achieve a certain point and and uh, maybe a certain way that I was training or doing something became boring for me and I would go into another avenue. I would look at a different thing to focus on and and found enjoyment in that. And, uh, and it was always enabled me to just work hard, you know, to be able to have fun because it's something new and you're enjoying and and. Um, so at the same time, be able to, to excel and grow in the right direction to reach your goals. So 
you know, even now I'm, I'm in a new career and, and um, you know, completely different, obviously, to what, what I used to do. It's, you know, it's finance, it's numbers, you know, you're dealing with other people's money and there's regulation and it's so different. But, you know, uh, I've, been, I've had amazing mentors, but I've, I've just also found like certain sections in finance that I love and that excite me. And, you know, and we head down those roads, roads and, and so far they've been paying off. And, you know, I mean... Touch word this year, our fund is uh, the best performing hedge fund in Europe. So we're we're sort of like another Olympic gold in the terms of like that's my new Olympic gold, but uh, in a different sphere. But it just shows you that you know when you when you find the passion and you're willing to work hard, you're definitely going to be able to achieve whatever you need. Sure. Yeah, that's actually one of <laughs> the next question would be about your life after swimming. And <laughs> clearly, it's going really well. <laughs> So how did it affect you and any advice for us uh, that we can plan for post-swimming? <laughs> I'd say uh, always be inquisitive. I think, you know, um, you know, always be, be be wary of your world around you. You know, I think uh, swimming is good, you know, and, and, and uh, I used to love it, you know, but I was always inquisitive about the world and, and what I wanted to do afterwards and inquisitive about people that I met and what were they doing and what was their story and, I'd always try to picture myself in their shoes. Like, would I enjoy that? Would that be something that I might want to do and might excel at? And, um, you know, eventually, you know, finance is one of these things that I landed up in and, and, and you know, th- you know uh, luckily thriving and doing well in. But, um, yeah. you know, it's just because I had my eye out, you know, and I think uh, I realized at a young, young age that, you know, I, I wouldn't be a good coach. You know, I, if I was coaching you, you wouldn't be a very good swimmer because I'd lose my patience so quickly. <laughs> so, so I think, uh, luckily, you know, I haven't uh, made too many kids cry on the pool on the pool deck or anything like that. And and I think it's been a good direction for me to go in. So I think again, it's just you know being aware, looking around what you want to do. I mean, obviously, you know, congrats to you as well. I know that you you recently graduated, which is an amazing feat. And I think, you know, it's it's. So I think it's so cool because, you know, it's just not necessary that everyone is designed to go to university, but it's just that, you know, being inquisitive about something else, you're training your mind, you know, I think you're opening up different avenues and, and um, you know, you'll see opportunities wherever you go. And that's, that's life. Life is all about opportunities and are you willing to see them and walk through the door? So keep, yeah. keep an open mind. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's, yeah, I also felt like I never could really focus just on swimming. I needed something to get my mind off of swimming. So this year is a bit different because it's like swimming, 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 and trying to find your way into swimming. And but it's a challenge. I can see it's a challenge, but I'm trying to yeah. find my passions outside of swimming this year. <laughs> Good, but I, you know, I think I'll never forget the, the one of the defining moments of my career was that uh, when I was 16, I. Um, wasn't in such a good swimming period in my career and uh, or 15 sorry and I fell and I broke my ankle and for about four or five months I was out of the water completely and I couldn't couldn't train because I had two operations and in that moment when I wasn't able to get into the water um, it was a real like realization exactly how you said like the hunger to get back to the sport to get back to swimming to to know how much you love it and how much you enjoy it and you know, what you've just described of being, you know, with coronavirus, being kept out of the water for so long, you realize how much you love it and yeah. being able to get back in. I mean, I've seen you guys are, it looks, I'm sure Rock is training you quite hard and all the kids in South Africa are trying to, you know, get get behind uh, the miles that they've missed. But uh, it's just, it's a good realization of what you love. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, okay, so we all know that you and your beautiful wife are about to have a little boy. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's, what advice could you give to a parent of an upcoming swimmer since you're going to be a parent soon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, what worked well for me was that my uh, my mother and my father, you know, they were amazing um, support structure and they you know, they never like pushed me in terms of, um, it was always my choice, uh, what I wanted to do. And, and, you know, if I wanted to swim or did I want to go to training, but they pushed me indirectly in a sort of a small way in terms of, um, you know, if I said to my mom, you know, like, I don't want to go training today. Uh, I'm lazy. She said, okay, cool. Well, you know, you don't have to go today, but then I'm not going to take you for the rest of the week. So it was mm-hmm. like, a 
<laughs> the ball's in your court choice, you know, which is, which I thought actually, you know, in hindsight now, obviously when you're young, you think, oh man, you know, that's so innovative and, you know, like, you know, you, you know, that's, that's, that's crazy. But as you, you know, uh, it, it, the, the choice was always mine as if, and if I wanted to do anything and I wanted to achieve anything, you know, the ball was in my court. And I think that, that, uh, kind of realization, what taught you, you know, you have to go like time and time, you have to be consistent. You have to go train every day. You can't miss a day, you know, it adds up. And, uh, so, she, so all those kind of lessons where it was always like you're uh, giving the underlying lesson of of how to achieve something, but still giving the, the kid a choice of, you know, do they really want to do this? Because it, at the end of the day, it needs to be their choice and, and whether or not they, they want to be doing this. Yeah, and their responsibility as well. <laughs> right. Because... It's easy to, like, if you don't do well, <laughs> point fingers. But now you at least knew, like, you did everything 100%. So then there was obviously something else. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll never forget the kid's parents sometimes that, that would, uh, you know, run up and down the pool with the kid as they were swimming, yep. you know, almost as if they could be in the pool with them. And, and you know, it's, it's the most amazing, like, sort of affection that's, you know, that they're giving to, to the yeah. kid. But exactly, like, in the day, you know, when the gun goes, like the, the kid is in there alone and, you know, the parents, yeah, yeah. as much as you're running up and down on the side of the pool, it's not making little Johnny go faster no. at all. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> okay, so this is obviously a question that we've been going through this COVID-19 and we believe you had a very awful experience for you. So we're sorry to hear about that. Um, can you share anything else about that since we are in COVID-19 at the moment? But we are happy that you are healthy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was quite, quite an awful experience, I must say. Like, yeah. I mean, we, we caught it quite early on in terms of that, you know, that not too much was known at, at that stage. And, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of people know a lot more now. So it was kind of scary because you obviously see these, you know, these stats and all these, like, yeah. fear mongering of people dying. And, you know, at some point, you know, we like really high fevers, you know, we were, we were uh, like, I think got up to like 39.5 and obviously the failure being pregnant also, it was also quite scary, but, uh, yeah. you know, we, we, uh, we sort of did the, the suggested route where it was just paracetamol and you drink a lot of water and, uh, eventually it started, started to, to ease off. But funny enough, I still, I can't smell anything, uh, completely gone out the window. Uh, so like, I love my wine. I can't smell any wine. I have no. fancy, smells now like um for some reason i'll walk into the house and i can just smell onion everywhere even though there's no onion so yeah. it's sort of yeah it's uh it's 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 like completely destroyed like the the proteins that are in your nose that that help you smell and taste so apparently it takes quite a while to come back and we're doing i'm trying to do like um smell training so you'll smell like cinnamon or so coffee or very strong cells you almost have to teach yourself how to smell again it's such a crazy crazy uh virus that it can do these things but you know that's the worst that shall we say luckily that's happened to me and and uh you know fortunate for that i mean the upside now is that we have the antibodies and we're uh sort of kind of free to walk around now you know at least for a while we we, we know that we won't be infected which is a, a good thing yeah. hey <laughs> well we hope well we're happy that you're healthy and i hope you get your smell back <laughs> This new Thank experience you. and everything. <laughs> Since Thank you've been you. doing so well and everything, I'm sure you'll beat this as well. <laughs> well, look, the, the positive is that uh, at least when I change change my little boy's diapers, I won't be smelling too much. Oh, so that's, that's a good, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should be saying that. Your wife is going to hear, and then sorry for you, it's going to be every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane, thank you so much, Cam, for your time. And then, yeah, thank you so much for what you mean to South African sports. You are and always will be a true legend. <laughs> we miss you in South Africa. We wish you and your wife all the best for the birth of your baby and the exciting new chapter of your life. So um, I'm honoured to have been talking to you. <laughs> and a congrats again for those Olympic medals, including the one you won today four years ago. <laughs> Thanks, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next year. Hopefully I'll be maybe uh, interviewing you on full deck for Super Sport or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and the world can definitely be reversed. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope we get to go. <laughs> thanks, Cam. <laughs> Pleasure. In time.